just really proud of our team down the stretch. Um, you know, we were really a lot more intentional. Um, I think we were talking a little bit at halftime about, you know, their effort and energy was at a different level than ours. And anytime you can come back out and only have three turnovers in the second half, we'd only shot two free throws. We got to the line 25 times and then we had three offensive boards and we had eight more um, for 11. I out rebound them. We were getting out rebounded at half. So all the statistical categories just show how intentional. And um, I just thought we took our effort and energy to another level. So uh, really, really proud of our team in the way that won tonight. Adam. Um, so obviously coach Curry, you guys pulled out a very, very gritty win. What does that win feel like as you're, uh, as you hit your 500th win, obviously, like, how does that win? How does that second half make you make you feel like your team, like, played better? Because obviously, like, the whole story has been that you guys couldn't finish, but you guys came out and looked like a completely different team. So how does that make you feel to be your – for that type of win to be your 500th win? Well, you know, it's it's not about me. I'm just so happy that our team won tonight, you know, and to get that fifth win in conference play, being five and four is a lot better than being four and five, and then to get our 18th win. So – um, it's, it's not necessarily about me, but I do feel like, you know, one thing in our program that we talk a lot about is just grit, you know, that you can be the hardest worker in the room, the most competitive in the room. And I thought in the third and the fourth quarter, we were just that. So the way we won tonight, um, down the stretch, um, says a lot about this team and, and their makeup from a character standpoint. Ariel. Hi, Coach. Ariel Schaefer, CBS 42 in Birmingham. Congratulations on your 500 career win. Uh, between Aaliyah and Sarah, you 44 combined points. When you are coming down with a fourth quarter push the way you guys did, how have you seen those two really just take over leadership-wise with this team? Well, they just, I mean, they just had a will about him down the stretch, you know, and we kept trying to find Aaliyah in transition. Um I, I just can't say enough. They're really double trouble um, in a good way, you know, and they're such a great tandem and they play off each other. But, you know, I know you didn't mention Loyal, but I thought Loyal had one of her best games of the year. Just everything that she did tonight. I know the 15 points, but she just did so many things and situations that may go unrecognized. And um, I thought the three of them, they're our leadership committee. We meet and eat and hang out once a week and talk about how we can make our program better. It really has nothing to do with basketball. So, we have tremendous leadership in that locker room. And um, Aaliyah and S.A., I mean, they were unbelievable tonight. It's something I'll never forget. You know, S.A. looked at me in one huddle late and winked at me, and I said, this isn't funny. You know, she's just got some swagger and just one of the greatest competitors or competitors I've ever coached. Just, you know, it's going to be okay, and, and they just made it okay tonight. Courtney? Hi, Coach. Uh, this marks – three games in a row now that you guys have won. So just what has it been like for the team to kind of not to kind of claw their way back into SEC play and really prove themselves through these past three games? Well, I think you have to credit the staff. You have to credit the team. You have to credit the support staff. I mean, you know, right now, this time of year in February, um, your will has to be stronger than your skill. I think SA mentioned it earlier. It's not about talent. It's about the size of your heart. Um, and it's just a tremendous will around the program. You know, our expectation isn't just to get in the tournament. I mean, we expect to make the NCAA tournament. We understand that every one of these count and our backs were against the wall. And as we go into February, we know that's where we really make March special. So our sense of urgency, you know, that was the word at halftime was we had to have more of an urgency and we've got to continue to have an urgency. We'll enjoy this till midnight. We'll hit the reset button and try to get the next one. Ariel. Um, Coach, going along with that, what you said about this grind towards the second half of SEC play, what are you expecting maybe your leaders in the locker room, especially some of the younger ones, too, who are experiencing their first back half of SEC play? What are you expecting them to tell them in the locker room? You know, I don't know that I understood the question. It was kind of shaky on this end. I feel so bad. I couldn't hardly hear, but I think you were talking about leadership in the locker room. Uh, yes, Coach. With this back half of the season, with some of the younger players, what are you expecting your leaders to communicate with them who have been through this journey and as you guys go into not only the SEC championship, but you guys are on that bubble too with making the NCAA tournament? Well, I think it's so important. You know, if you a really interesting fact is no one on our roster had ever played at Vanderbilt um, because SA's group had the COVID year. So this environment's a little different too as far as the communication. Um, so everything that we're about um, was completely new tonight. 
I don't know if that affected the start, but um, the one thing that I can tell you is, is that, you know, they, the best kind of teams I've, I've noticed through the years are player led teams. And again, our core leadership group with, with uh, loyal and SA and Lee are just special. And so, you know, they, everything that they do and say, um, they add a lot of value every day. And I think the best kind of leadership is action. You know, it's not a lot of words, um, but they do speak when they need to. So we just continue to have to follow that group. I mean, all three have played in an NCAA tournament. They understand what this time of year is about. And we know we need to be playing our best basketball headed into March. So the little things that make a big difference and, and just the poise and calmness that those three have had about them have really made us better, especially as youthful and as inexperienced as we are around them. Courtney. What was the team atmosphere like as you guys started that comeback and when that final buzzer rang and you have talked a lot about battling through adversity this season and this game truly showed that you guys have done that. So what is that like to see that come to full effect? Well, I've always said as a coach, there's nothing more fun than watch your team celebrate a big win on the road, especially in a comeback fashion. Um, as a coach, you know, those are really special moments. And I know our staff, we weren't very happy at half. You know, I know there were some hard things said um, by our players before we walked in. You know, I'm walking in and SA says, I've got it. So, I mean, we we were pretty fired up at half. And we made some adjustments and our kids responded. But at the end of the day, it's players that make plays. So, um, again, there's nothing more fun than watching your team celebrate a big road win and, and the way they did it in this kind of fashion. I get some Vanderbilt team that's had some really good wins and near 21 season, and it's a hard place to play. So um, they're going to beat a lot of people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Roll Tide.